It is time for Political Breakfast. When we last spoke, both strategist Brian Robinson and Theron Johnson wondered where were President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris in wake of Helene. Both put Georgia on their calendars this week. Brian and Theron are both here live this morning to talk about what their visit really means in the scheme of things. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. Glad to have you here. Um, Brian, you first. Uh, You have some saying, while a visit is nice, it's not enough at this point, especially since uh, we are six days in and people are still without essentials like power. What are your thoughts on that? Well, there's the immediate needs of the people that they're going to visit. And some of these parts of Georgia are still suffering terribly with no power in some cities, no water even. Uh, friends who are able who are able to afford to leave have left and gone to a hotel or resort somewhere, even though looting has occur- occurred in some of these places. But the candidates also operate outside of these local needs. There's a bigger picture for them. And this is a moment on the political side to show leadership and empathy and action on the ground, those visuals that are broadcast not just to the people in Georgia and North Carolina who are hurting, but to constituents and voters around the country, that's really what this is about. Look, what is really needed, whether it's from the state government under Brian Kemp or the federal government under Joe Biden, is disaster relief funds and the manpower needed to get the cities back on their feet. So, Theron, you so, step in here. Brett, President Biden will tour areas hit hard today. Does does the timing work in everyone's favor, in your opinion? Well, you know, to our loyal listeners, you right, Lisa, um, we were not just wondering. I, I did sort of wonder, like, not necessarily if they would come. It was when they would come. Because, you know, Donald Trump going to Valdosta is one thing. He's a Republican presidential nominee. But when the president and the vice president um, come to your county, it comes to your city. It's a whole level of planning that goes into that. And so what Kamala Harris did when she visited Augusta is that she talked about the resources that she's already going to work with Joe Biden to bring. And they focus a lot on not disrupting the recovery effort. When the president comes to Georgia, um, um, he's going to uh, deliver the same thing. And I think Brian is right. I mean, it's about the federal and state working together. But real quick, Lisa, you know, we we definitely, our hearts go out to the lives that were lost. I offer my condolences to those families. You know, huge shout out to Georgia Power and the EMCs who have frontline workers right now, women and men who are not sleeping, who's doing their best to restore power. Water is needed. But we had two U.S. senators here in Georgia, Senator Warnock and Senator Ossoff, who has, in a bipartisan effort, been doing their own thing, encouraging people like me uh, to donate water, to donate money to directly to cities to make sure they recover. So I think while this is a tragic event and we definitely are in a very unusual, unorthodox recovery uh, statue, I have been proud of the politicians coming together in a bipartisan manner and definitely continuing to encourage Georgia Power and the EMCs all across the state to continue to work hard to restore power. Brian, let me ask you this. The vice presidential debate, did it get lost in all of this? Uh, uh, What were your thoughts? Uh, We were meeting this morning to talk about the debate, but of course, uh, Helene uh, takes precedence. I, I do think that it got a lot of attention. It has really consumed the political discourse this week, as it should. It really was a interesting 90 minutes because it was so different than what we've gotten used to. It was a civil interchange between two people who seemed rational and uh, and level-headed. They seemed to be like the kind of people that I interact with in my daily life, normal, nice folks. And it was just so refreshing. You know, the entire purpose of this show that Theron and I have done for nine years is about showing how we're not really that far apart, even though there are differences. And you can do it without being a jerk. And we saw that really well done by both candidates. That said, J.D. Vance did win the debate. He was much smoother. He was much more capable. This is not Tim Walz's strong point. People ask, like, why is he not doing too many interviews I think we saw on uh, Tuesday night why he's not. It's just not his skill set. J.D. Vance is a Yale Law School grad. You could definitely see the IQ of this guy. You could see how he went from poverty with a drug-addicted mom raised by his grandma to Yale Law School. And uh, Tim Walls didn't hurt his campaign, but he also 
didn't seem to score any points either. Theron, what does all this mean uh, for Georgians? Well, for Georgians, what we saw was that I think one of the things that all Americans were paying attention to, Lisa, and we've learned this in what we've seen as far as the transition between Joe Biden going from being president to now stepping aside, passing the torch to his vice president. So what Governor Walls did on the debate stage, number one, he showed the American people that he is ready to serve with Kamala Harris if she becomes a president. I do believe Walls won the debate. And if you look at every single poll, every single focus group, live focus group doing the debate, he won on key issues like immigration. He talked a lot about gun violence. He showed empathy. He qu- he quoted Bible verses. And what you saw from J.D. Vance, Lisa, is a continu- continuation of him trying to defend a few things. One, why did he talk so bad about Donald Trump and then decided to support him? Uh, he didn't do Trump any favor as far as when it came to defending the Constitution. I think Governor Walls at the very end of the debate did a better job of that. And then when it came to women's reproductive rights, you know, allowing women to decide what they want to do with their body to handle their business, and particularly when it comes to their emotions and their bodies, you know, Governor Walls spoke very, very candidly about that. And so I think he won the debate. I think it definitely helped the Harris Walls campaign. And as far as with Georgians, look, you know, we're in a very, very uh, tough state right now. I mean, the priority of getting recovery and restoration to the people who deserve it all across the state is top priority. What I would encourage now is the Secretary of State and local elections offices to be ready um, because right now, I mean, we're 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 literally um, just a little bit over 30 days. I mean, 30 days are left before an election. And so we got to make sure that the infrastructure is in place, that people know how to go vote, and particularly in these rural areas, um, you know, with some of these polling centers and, and election centers devastated. So oh. there's going to be a huge encouragement of early voting, absentee voting, and uh, in-person voting that I think that both parties are going to focus on for these next few weeks. All right, Brian, we've got about 30 seconds. Uh, Did this vice presidential debate move Georgia voters in one direction or the other? Vice presidential debates are famous for one thing, being eminently forgettable. And I think this is going to be no exception, even though I think it done. I think the importance thing moving forward is it set J.D. Vance up as the future of the Republican Party. And I'll say with with Governor Walls, he looked uncomfortable in his own skin. He looked like he had just seen a ghost. His body language was very nervous, whereas J.D. Vance looked very calm and determined. And he he had a plan. And I don't think J.D. I don't think Governor Walls had a plan. I don't think he knew what he wanted to deliver at the end of 90 minutes. And J.D. Vance told Americans, hey, we're not as, as extreme. We're not as uh, uncivil as you may think we are. We have some reasonable ideas on some of these divisive issues. He delivered on that. Brian Robinson, Theron Johnson, thank you so much for checking in this morning. We'll talk soon. Thank, thank you. you. Amplifying Atlanta, this is Listener Funded, WABE. Still to come this morning, the latest in local news from our WABE news team.